January 30th, 1956 began a long, rich history for K-Texas Television. That's the date the station first signed on the air with the original call letters KPAR. Although the station is currently located in Abilene, its roots can be found in Sweetwater. Before the days of cable, rabbit ears and rooftop antennas were the only way to bring KPAR into your household. I heard while I was in radio that Dub Rogers had a permit for a satellite station here in Sweetwater. Well, that's how I got into television. They, they told it my do-it-yourself kit. Here was all this equipment piled out there. You put it together and move it to Sweetwater. The station's founder, Dub Rogers, had a rich history of naming his stations after friends and family. KPAR was no different. Well, that was his secretary's name, Debbie Parr. He, he owned a station over in Big Springs, K-E-D-Y, and that was his wife's name, Edie. <laughs> so that's how the KPAR come about. News has always been the station's foundation. From the moment KPAR signed on the air, broadcasting news was a priority. Walter Grubbs and Jim Wright became the first news anchors. Alongside news broadcasts, KPAR created original programming and was the home of CBS in West Texas. The station made the move to Abilene in 1960. North Fifth and Pine, the current home of the First National Bank, was the first location for KPAR in Abilene. They built studios at Fifth and Pine in Abilene, show window studios, big plate glass windows. Till a bus go by, the windows would rattle, and that was a fiasco. It later changed locations to the Westgate Mall, where Kmart currently stands. In 1966, the call letters changed to KTXS, and the station was moved to its present-day home. Former general manager Bob Jackson remembers that day very well. It was his first day on the job. But the turn-on, you, you haven't met anybody until you met the turn on And he said, ah, you come back Monday, we ain't got time to mess with you because we're going to move out to the new studio. So I didn't go in for a week because he, he was moving everybody out there, you know. It was just exciting. And the studio was, you'd go, you'd go all the way back to the studio and that was so much bigger than everything else. You know, it was a huge building. It was big enough for two or, two or three studios inside. In 1979, the station faced its most difficult obstacle. On January 1st at 7.42 p.m., the new year literally began with a bang as the K-Texas Tower came crashing to the ground. It was on January the 1st, J.P. Allen's birthday, and I was at home. I was kind of a raging sort of a guy too, and, and I was always hounding the uh, utility company. We were always going off there and I'd call them up and I'd race sand with them and tell them, you know. And so that night we went off the air. And I called that bunch and I said, you guys got something wrong out there and I want it fixed now. So that guy, so about 30 minutes this guy called me back and said, you're right, we have got a problem. Talk about tears. On my birthday, when that tower fell, we'd had a studio party at some place. The night before, had a big time. I spent the night in Abilene and, and got home and settled in to watch television. And all of a sudden, phew, it goes off. Although one man was inside the building during the tower's fall, thankfully, he wasn't hurt. Over the next year, K-Texas had to build a new tower while dropping CBS programming and becoming an ABC affiliate. The engineering staff worked relentlessly to get K-Texas back on the air. Their hard work and perseverance eventually paid off with a taller tower erected in place of the old one. Over the last 50 years, K-Texas has produced thousands of hours of local programming. Shows like Henry's Den with Michael Henry Martin. must be deeper than mine are... Uh... Men's 
like the corners of my mind. And Sylvia's Chalet with Sylvia Holmes. Uh, are you going to be in the circus? Well, I won't be uh, actually in the circus. But yeah. I do want to stick my neck out and make one prediction here, and that is I think really it's going to rain today. I really do. Uh, Bob Izzard did mention... Uh, in 1991, Academic Challenge first hit the air. The show was designed to test the intelligence of area students in an entertaining game show format. Academic Challenge was on the air for an outstanding 14 years. And celebrating its 20th year, K-Texas Football Friday Night, the area's top-rated high school football highlight show. In November of 1992, K-Texas wanted to kick off the Christmas season in a big way. That was the beginning of the K-Texas Christmas Lights Parade. 1998 was a banner year. We joined forces with others in the community to start Mission Thanksgiving. Thousands of people benefit each year from the program. The compassion of our viewers has never been more evident than in their support of the Children's Miracle Network celebration. 1998 was the year K-Texas joined forces with Hendrick Health System. In nine years, the Children's Miracle Network has pulled in record donations and won national recognition in our quest to help meet children's hospitals. And we've always had a soft spot in our heart for animals. K-Texas has been finding homes for homeless animals for years. Our Rescue the Animals segment has saved many little lives from certain death. Covering all types of news, K-Texas has been there live. We were the first station to have a live van to broadcast events in and around Abilene. In July of 1992, K-Texas became the first station in Abilene to get a satellite truck. And we remain the only station with a live satellite truck. This has allowed us to bring news live from anywhere in our viewing area and around the nation. Shortly after obtaining the satellite truck, we put it to the test, beaming 47 straight days of live, non-stop coverage of the Branch Davidian Siege in Waco to the entire country. Since that day, K-Texas has led the way in live events concerning our area, from severe weather to local sporting events. K-Texas is the news leader in live coverage. Nothing is more important than keeping families safe. In the 70s, K-Texas was the first Abilene station to utilize radar. Then in 1996, K-Texas became the only station in Abilene with its own live Doppler radar. With Doppler radar, K-Texas has been the leading station in weather coverage, a distinction it holds to this day. K-Texas News has been honored more than any other local television news station, more than 200 times by the Associated Press. Recognition in every category, from best newscast, to spot news, to feature reporting. And it's not just the news department that's been honored. The station's community involvement is the reason why the Associated Press has honored K-Texas for nine straight years with a prestigious Bonner McLean Award for Community Service. It is excellent work, history, and a foundation in leadership by all our current and former employees that helped K-Texas make even bigger history this year. Led by our longest tenured general manager, Jackie Rutledge, for the first time in our history, K-Texas News ranked number one in the ratings at the 10 p.m. newscast. A milestone, an achievement that everyone at K-Texas knows comes from a proud past. Building a foundation to create an even better future. Serving your community in the next 50 years. Happy 50th anniversary, K-Texas, from Rodney. That'd be me. Hello, everyone. I am... Don't do the wave. Okay. Just... Okay, sorry. <laughs> Happy 50th anniversary, K-Texas. We want to say happy anniversary and happy birthday to K-Texas. He did not. Well, he could have.